Earlier in the course, when I talked about paint tools, I mentioned that you could use the clone stamp tool to sample an area of an image and then essentially paste that area on some other area of the image, then have that pasted part of the clip follow motion. It's kind of tricky to do that. It's a manual process and it's very tedious. But you can use the tracker to take out that tedium and you can connect everything up with expressions. So let's see how that works in working files. Go to After Effects Projects and open up 1605 Clone Tracker. The goal here is to put some red chips on top of these black chips, so replace them. And we're fooling somebody here, the dealer or the player, but in any event, we're going to replace those black chips with red chips, very much like this completed comp over here. There are these red chips there, which are in fact cloned there. I can turn off the clone for a moment. You'll see the black chips that were there before. Now they're red, and we can put those red chips on there and have them follow the motion of those black chips pretty exactly without too much trouble here, thanks to the tracker and thanks to expressions. So you can look at that later if you want to see how it was done. Let's go back here to start, and we're going to do that on this particular clip. First order of business is to track motion. We're going to track the motion of the black chips. So to do that, let's go open up the tracker by going Window, Tracker. And then we're going to decide which layer we need to track, which is going to be pretty obvious since there's only one. So our motion source is Blackjack. That turns off Blackjack, so you got to click on it again to make it active again. Then we need to say we're going to track motion. And that puts the target up there. We need to drag the target over to the black chips. I'll do Control or Command Plus to zoom in a bit here and push down the space bar to get the hand tool going here. We'll drag that guy over. Let's see how that works. Kind of find a place I can grab onto there. Let me zoom in a little bit more just to get a better handle on it. There we go. And then the page will scroll here anyways. There you go. What we want to do is we want to track these black chips. And if I just try to track the center, it won't work. This is a big blob of black. So I need to go outside here to make sure I enclose the entire area of those chips. We'll drag it over a little bit to the right just to make sure you got all centered up here and pull this thing out a bit like that. Make it a little bit larger. Get the feature point right in the center there, the attach point that is. There we go. I think we got it. Now let's get a little bit higher to get the whole feature region there. All right, now we want to track this, and it'll take a little while, but it'll go smoothly. There's nothing really that causes any problems with this tracking. So I'm going to start the tracking here, and when it's done, I will get back to you. All right, we've completed the process. Let's take a look at the tracker there. You can see how it follows the black chips pretty well there. Good. So the next order of business here is to get the clones. We need to sample the area we want to clone first. And then we're going to paste it where we want to paste it. And then we need to get it to follow the motion. So I'm interested in getting that set of red chips down there without the person's hands in the way. So right about there would be a good place to do it. I'm going to zoom in a bit by going Control or Command Plus. And then we'll drag our way down there. Here we go. And now I need to go get the clone stamp tool and sample this region. So I'm going to put it right in the center there. Hold down the Alt or the Option key and get my sample. Now we're going to go over to the black chips, and I'm going to go back to the beginning of this clip to make sure we got things all settled up here. I'm going to turn off the motion tracker for now. i just go to None so I can see things a little better. I really want to get this nice and tight, so I'll go Control or Command Plus to zoom in some more. There we go. And now the red chips will probably be smaller than these black chips because of where the camera position was moments ago. But that's okay. We'll fix that with scale here in a little while. So I click here and start painting this guy on. I just want to go right to the edges and try not to go beyond the edges because I don't want to pick up the felt color from that little clone spot too much anyways because the felt color there is a little bit different than this felt color. This felt color is in the shade and that other one was not in the shadow of somebody's hands there. That looks reasonably good, I think. All right, we're going to now take a look at what we've got there. Put on here to see what we have. We should have effects now with paint. Inside paint, we've got the clone and the clone lasts for the entire clip. What I did was I locked the source time. So basically this is a freeze frame from that moment. If I didn't lock the source time, it would be picking stuff as the camera moved. It would not be the red chips for more than a second or so while the camera moves. So this way we've got just the chips and nothing else but the chips. And they last for the entire length of the clip because we put it back to the beginning when we did that. All right, we need to somehow connect this clone to the motion tracker. So I'm going to go up here, close this down for one second here, and just press the U key so you can see all those keyframes. Feature center, attach point, that kind of stuff. We want to take that clone position and have the clone position be connected to the feature center here. So normally we'd go over here to tracker and we would do something like edit target. So the current track, for example, is tracker one. 
and we click on edit target, but you're going to see there's no target to apply motion to because we don't have another layer here and there's nothing inside here that's got a feature point or a feature center. So what's the deal? Well, we're going to do this using expressions. What we need to do is open up the clone stamp tool. So go back up here and open up the effects and the paint and under clone, down under clone transform, there's position. And I want to connect position to the feature center of the motion. So I go up here, we're going to open up motion trackers. And then we're going to go down here to the track point. And there's the feature center. We want to connect the clone position to the feature center. So I go on down here to the clone position. I alt click on the stopwatch on the toggle animation switch like that to turn on expressions. I want to take this pick whip and drag it on up the screen here a ways. I keep on going a little higher. We're going to connect it to the feature center right there. Click away here just to make sure that that's all connected up. Let's go back to the composition now and see how that worked out. Here are the red chips. You see they aren't quite big enough. Let's see if they follow the motion here, though. Excellent. Look at that. It looks pretty good. At the end there, they're pretty much the right size. Let's zoom in a little bit and see how that worked. Controller Command Plus. That looks good. So what I want to do is set scale now. Just the one last thing I want to do here. So I got down and transform here. I'm going to turn on keyframes for scale. And I like the scale right there. Let's back up here in time to some other point here where it's a little bit smaller. I'll drag that up and we'll set scale to have it match that like this a little bit like that. And I think we need to adjust the anchor point just a touch here. Let's just see what we need to do there. If I can move the anchor point just a little bit there. There you go. Let's see how that works out throughout. I might need to change the anchor point later here, but let's see how that looks. It's trying to stay tight here just to really check our work here. God darn it. That looks like it's pretty good with that one anchor point change. Let's just go shift forward slash to go all the way out and take a look at that here by just dragging it through. And we have done it. So that focuses how you take some object from someplace else in a clip and replace some object elsewhere in the clip and then have that object follow motion using the tracker and expressions.